Hello YouTube friends, Dr. Teresa Ulrich here. It's always so good to be with you. Thank you for joining me. Welcome part to part two of my series, Comparing Dwarf and Large Seahorses. I have posted links below to the introduction to the series and part one. Today in part two, we're going to talk about seahorse keeping and the requirement of expert knowledge. One of the things that's important to understand about aquariums, all aquariums, is that they undergo a process when first started through called a nitrogen cycle. You'll want to look up more detailed information about this in other locations but the general basic description, very simplified description is that any new tank, whether it's fresh water or salt water, when it starts up and has some sort of waste product added to it, well, the aquarium will convert that waste product into a toxic chemical called ammonia. Over time, that ammonia converts into something called nitrites with an I. Both ammonia and nitrites are toxic to fish and more sensitive and delicate fish such as marine fish and seahorses can actually die from those high levels. In the next phase of the cycle, nitrite is converted to nitrate with an A. Now nitrate is generally much safer for fish than the ammonia and nitrite levels. But for more delicate fish like seahorses, we definitely need to keep the nitrates also very low. They are sensitive to them. And so one of the things that's different about keeping saltwater aquariums is that you will have to perform regular water testing. And when you're first setting up your tank, you'll want to monitor your ammonium levels. Figure out the best way for you to jumpstart that ammonia buildup. Then track as ammonia converts to nitrite and eventually nitrate. But as I mentioned, in a seahorse tank, elevated nitrates are not good either. So we have to do something to get those nitrates out of the tank. And the easiest and best way to do that is to perform regular water changes with fresh, clean ocean or newly prepared synthetic seawater. Marine fish in general are much more difficult to care for and require much more time than what some people may have experienced with tropical fish, other freshwater fish, or goldfish for that matter. In addition to measuring the components of the nitrogen cycle, sometimes it's a good idea to measure other components such as alkalinity, pH, magnesium, calcium. Now those are not things that need to be measured all the time, but you do want to make sure they're in an acceptable range and those are areas that you can investigate if you do start having problems with your seahorses after you purchase them. But all in all, you need to understand that you have to have an awareness of the nitrogen cycle. You have to measure the water consistently to make sure parameters are within check. and. You have to look for signs that your fish are feeling well. Unlike cold water or other freshwater tropical fish, you cannot just put marine fish in an aquarium and just hope for the best if you really want to be successful. Seahorses in particular are delicate. As you could see by their shape, they look quite a bit different than most other fish. And because of that, their digestive system is different. As other fish have evolved, seahorses have not evolved. And so their digestive system is very simple. In fact, some people say that seahorses don't even have a stomach. We don't know if that's true, but they do have a very simple digestive tract. 
and food does pass through them very quickly. Also, they have very delicate immune systems, so they are very sensitive to imperfect water conditions. And this is why that you really want to get familiar with the nitrogen, nitrogen cycle and other components of water, such as salt level and water temperature, that are essential to keep within the range that is acceptable for being successful with raising seahorses. Just a word of caution. I've been keeping seahorses for various periods over the years, for many, many years. And every time I start up with seahorses again, I am constantly learning new things. There is new research, new experiments, new descriptions of ways to care for seahorses. One of the things that's very challenging is that even if all of your measurable parameters look correct, your seahorses can still exhibit problems and you're going to have to try to figure out where you are going wrong. You want to be prepared ahead of time. Do your research and try to have everything as perfect as you can before you even get started rather than waiting until you get the seahorses and start finding you have problems and trying to figure out what could be going wrong. As you can imagine, it's very stressful to not know what's happening to your seahorses when they are exhibiting problems and then everything that you can visibly measure looks like it's at a level that it should be. Well, this is the end of part two. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you'll continue with the series and that you're enjoying it and liking it. Please hit the like button if you do. And if you want to be informed about when part three becomes available, please make sure you subscribe to Cowfrish Pro. I really appreciate you joining me today and I hope to see you at the next installment for part three.